This video is sponsored by Surfshark and today it's the Audi RS5 day. Today we get this RS5 on the road. Now first off I want to say a massive thank you for all your guys support and the reception that we got off the last video of giving away the BMW M4 and good luck to everyone that managed to get a ticket although the winner was probably announced by now. But today we are back in action and we are back on the Audi RS5, which I got for Hannah to use as her new daily car. So really, right now we're ready to pretty much put the car back together. Me and Mark carried on cracking away at this quarter panel right here, and this is exactly how we got to this stage right here. Never guess the places that I've been. So as you can see, that part of the car was pretty drastically damaged and it's part of the chassis. Luckily, you can buy this part directly from Audi itself. Instead of replacing the whole part which goes directly back to the door, we cut off the part that was damaged and then welded on the new part where we cut the old part off. Once Mark welded all the top part on, he then could weld on the bottom part. We do have to make sure this is absolutely bang on because the wing actually bolts to this. So if anything's out, it just wouldn't look right. But with a bit of cleaning up and a bit of filler over the top, you would never have known that that was cut and welded back together. So a massive shout out to Mark for the help, but before we start putting this whole thing back together, we've got to clean this up, give it a bit of paint, so that it's not noticeable when all the wings and the bonnet and the bumper is back on. But before we start painting, we've got to get the Lambo out. There's nothing like a cold start on a twin turbo Lamborghini Gallardo. Nothing. Okay, let's do this. First up is the thinners. We've got to make sure that this surface is nice and clean and ready for paint. Time to mask the area and then the high build primer is up. I'm going to spray this all around the area. It's really thick paint and it should cover up a load of the scratches. Then I've jumped straight ahead with the sealer. This is just to seal any gaps in the panels and to stop rust. As you can see, this is the OEM side which mine probably won't look like. Then once the primer had dried, I begin to rub that down with a bit of sandpaper. Then I can give it a nice base coat of Panther Black, which is actually the color of the RS5. Okay, and that is done. There is a reason why I don't paint cars and I wrap them because, well, uh, well, it, well it, well, yeah, it's bad. But at least now, all the foundations are there for this car to go back together. And I'm hoping that won't be too noticeable once everything's on. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to crack on with it. Let's do it. So we really aren't messing around in this video. I really want to get this RS5 back on the road. I've got to guide this aircon pipe from the bottom all the way back to the top. And then I can put on the brand new second-hand wing. There's loads of bolts that hold the wing on and I had to buy all these bolts separately from Audi. There's some on the top of the wing, there's some on the inside which connect to the side skirt and there's one even on the back side of it. Here's my professional panel gap measurement with a bit of cardboard. <laughs> I'm sure that's legit. And then there's a few more plastic trims to go in along with the washer bottle as well. The washer bottle sits on the inside of the wing. I can connect up all the electrical connectors to it and the washer pipes as well. And once I can do that, I can add all these little trims, which again, I've had to buy directly from Audi. And believe me, all these things do add up. But some things weren't too bad, like this little headlight bracket repair kit that I got for about £15 directly from Audi. In an unexpected sort of turn of events, I'm finally getting a two post ramp. I've been needing one for ages, it's gonna break my back, but it's turned up midway through doing the Audi RS5, which means I've gotta get it off this ramp. I hope I've plugged in all the airbag sensors okay, else we're gonna get an airbag in my face now. Let's start this up, get it out, get the two post ramp in, let's do it. Please don't let this airbag sensor go off. Airbag go off. We're good, is the air... The airbag light has got, oh no, it's stayed on. And in a blink of an eye, I have a two post ramp. What a childhood dream that is. But there's no time to waste. We're back onto the bumper, taking the grill out of the old one and installing it in the brand new second hand one. And believe me, there's about a hundred bolts holding that grill in. But once it's in, the bumper goes on, the arch lining goes in and some new arch lining for the damaged side as well. And it's starting to look really fresh. Even if it was battering me. But on goes the wheels, both sides, and I could bring the car down with my new two post ramp. Come on. Okay, finally, the RS5 is beginning to look 
like an RS5. Now, a few of you may have not noticed, but the wing, the bumper, and the bonnet are actually blue, and the car is black. And I've left the bonnet off at the minute because it's gonna be easier for the next job. But just take a look at the RS5. It is looking really good. But Max, can I tell you what doesn't look good? And what's that? Using public Wi-Fi without using Surfshark. You know what? You're right. But look at it first, Surfshark has sponsored today's video. Surfshark is a VPN tool, and that stands for Virtual Private Network. That means it encrypts all the data sent via the internet so no one can steal your passwords, steal your videos, view your private messages, or see what you're doing online. Now, a lot of people assume public Wi-Fi is safe. Well, they're wrong. Public Wi-Fi is a gold mine for hackers, but not when using Surfshark. Now, I've been using Surfshark for a long time now, and keeping my data safe isn't the only thing it's good at. Check this out. So let's say I want to watch the film The Godfather, but it's not available in the UK on Netflix. That's not a problem, though, because I can go over to Surfshark in the top right-hand corner, change my browsing location to Turkey, go back onto Netflix, give it a refresh, and there it is, ready to watch. So to get Surfshark today, click the link in the description box below. Use code Matt Armstrong, and you're going to get yourself 83% off, plus an extra three months for free. And what's extra cool, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there is literally no risk. Go check it out. Now, we really ain't far off now getting the RS5 on the road and letting Hannah do the honours on taking it for its first drive. Now, although luckily we managed to get the full service history on this car, we don't exactly know what it's been through in the past couple of months, which I think it's about the right time for us to do a nice little service before we get it out on the road. Let's do it. Servicing the car is something that's looked over a fair bit, especially after doing the amount of work that we've already done to it. But whilst we're there, we might as well crack on with it. And all the service parts for the RS5 didn't come cheap. And I can imagine if you get this service at a main dealer, it will be really expensive. To start off, there's two air filters and eight spark plugs. This is obviously going to put up the price for parts. And because there's more parts to change, it's also going to put up your price for labour as well. And after removing the first spark plug, I could see that, well, these probably have never been done. Look at the carbon buildup on that spark plug. And this is how they should look. But sure enough, we crack on with the seven more spark plugs that we need to remove and replace. And all of them looking in exactly the same condition, carboned up to hell. There's a few ways you can help prevent this carbon buildup, and one of them is regular servicing. Another is using good fuel like 99 Arm Rom, but generally on these direct injection engines, they are going to get a lot of carbon buildup over time. But for now, it's time to remove the oil filter because we're about to change the oil. Again, the oil looks pretty dirty. And up in my new two post ramp, get in, where I can stand up underneath the car to remove the sump plug. Oh, the luxury. There's 9.7 litres of oil in this thing, so it takes a fair while to drain out. Once I put a new washer on the sump plug, I can bolt that back in. Then put all the under trays back on, which again are held in by about a thousand bolts, which again would up your labour costs if you got this done at a main dealer. And to think about it, I probably shouldn't have put the under trays on till afterwards to make sure I could check for any leaks. But hey, I'm not a professional, I'll learn as I go along. The oil we're going to be putting in is 5W30, fully synthetic from Miller's. Feel free for anyone to cry about that in the comment section below. And once the 9.7 litres of oil is back in the engine, I can begin to put the intake system back on. then remove these dirty air filters and replace them with nice and clean ones. And there we have the finished product. Oh, and one last thing as well, new bonnet hinges and a bonnet. Now, I'm still missing a few parts which we'll go through, but can we just 
appreciate the unit now. I think I'm so guilty sometimes of moving so quick that I actually forget to just stop and look at what we've achieved so far as a channel. It's, it's literally unreal. I mean, I know it doesn't look like much to some people, but this is literally a childhood dream. From going from last year working on cars on my driveway to now having a full unit with a two post ramp and also a ramp I can use for wrapping is absolutely unreal. I mean, it doesn't feel real. And what absolutely puts the icing on the cake for this two post ramp, it means now we have more parking because we can put a car in the air and park a car underneath, which means more cars, come on. Okay, so first off I've noticed that we're missing a bonnet stopper on that side. And then also we're missing one of these clips on that side. But these are just the little things that we could do afterwards. And also now the wing is on and everything, the repair on this side doesn't actually look too bad. I mean, the paint doesn't look far off at all, but I mean, well, my ceiling job <laughs> is not the best at all. It is not like OEM, but I'm probably never gonna get it OEM. End of the day, it is fixed and it's, well, it don't, I don't think it's too bad. It's not too bad. Also, there's a small dent in the bonnet here, which we're gonna have to get fixed before it goes to paint. But now I think it's about time we can start this thing and move it outside. It's always a little bit nerve wracking starting one of these cars after a service purely because of the fact it doesn't have a dipstick. Why do they seem to over engineer everything, put a thousand bolts in the back of the grill, put loads of suspension arms, but then get rid of the simple dipstick? <laughs> I don't know, it's all electronically done now, but let's start it up and fingers crossed this runs good. Come on RS5. Yes, we seem to be running smooth. Yes, another car back on the road, just about, just about. This is a 4.2 V8 and the engine is so quiet, you almost can't even hear it running. It's ridiculously smooth. It's only done around 39,000 miles, but it, that is so smooth. Okay, so on the dashboard, we've still got a fuel warning light, easily fixed, and then the adaptive headlight warning light. So I've since found out that this original headlight has some sort of trickery which allows it to move left to right when going around corners, and this one doesn't have that. But if I'm 100% honest with you guys, I'm not gonna miss that and I'm not sure Hannah is gonna miss that either. So possibly it could be one thing that we could uh, code out rather than buying a whole new headlight. I, I know a lot of you probably are gonna hate that. Now the engine is still not warm enough to check the oil, which I think is absolutely stupid. If you had no oil in there, well, well surely it'd be, the dash would be lit up like a Christmas tree, but well, it, we can't check it yet. But Hannah, seeing that is your car, what do you think? Oh, I love it. It is looking really good. It's got so much potential as well. But there's one thing that I think, I'd, well, I'm not too sure about. Just get in and just give it a bit of a rev. This is a 4.2 V8 and it was allowed to leave the factory sounding like this. Yeah, that is, it's, it's got a good tone, but that is too quiet. I think that's gotta be one of your first mods. Yeah, it's a problem. It's so <laughs> quiet, isn't it? So this car obviously is Hannah's, so it's only right that Hannah does the first drive in it, and it doesn't actually have an MOT test yet. In the UK, you need an MOT test to be able to drive it on the road and make sure that it's basically fit and worthy for the road. So fingers crossed that's gonna pass the MOT. That's exactly where we're gonna be heading now. You are allowed to drive to an MOT test centre. So, well, <laughs> let's see if we make it there without any issues. So far, so good. Do you like it? I love it. That's good. Is it quick? Do you know what? I haven't actually put my foot down yet. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> Did you have your foot flat to the floor? I hit the little button at the end. Okay, okay, it's not that quick, but well, I, I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know, it might need a carbon clean, but uh, <laughs> whatever. But again, a successful day on the Audi RS5. Let's go see if it'll pass this MOT test and we can finally get this on the road and start the fun stuff. Obviously it needs painting, but if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I guess guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.